All right, everybody, this is Ross. Um, in today's video, we're gonna do some summer rooting of fig cuttings. I have uh, my Coldedon Blanc here. This is my absolute favorite tasting variety. And what we did in a video that we just put out was actually rejuvenation prune it. We took off the entire top off the tree, cut it all the way down to the base, all to encourage just some nice healthy shoots to come up and uh, make this tree a lot healthier and happier in the long run. But I wanna make use of this wood, you know? Um, I don't wanna let this go to waste, so I figure let's do some summer pruning. Now, I don't normally do summer pruning, right? Um, most of the time, I really prefer doing this indoors uh, or in the spring. So if we're doing some rooting in the summer, the real big issue that you guys are gonna have to to deal with and change your environment is actually the environment. Change that environment so that you have less desiccation. Maybe it's a bit cooler. Maybe you have less sunlight. Um, I'll get to that environment in just a minute. But the reason for that is that we wanna have less desiccation. Because it's so warm out here, these cuttings are going to have a greater chance of drying out. Indoors, we have a very stable environment. In the spring, here in this climate, it is also a, a bit cooler to get things a bit set up and easier to adjust to the outdoor temperatures and the outdoor environment that uh, by the time the summer rolls around, these trees are already kind of in gear. So doing this now, even though we're not technically in the summer, it does feel like summer. Summer comes very quickly here in Pennsylvania. So, you know, it's just something you gotta watch out for is the environment. We'll get to that in a minute. now. Another reason why I like to do this indoors or in the spring is that you just get a larger tree. So behind me here, I have a number of trees I rooted indoors this winter time, put them into five gallon size pots. A lot of them have fruits on them. A lot of them will fruit this year and continue to put out fruits this year. Um, and also we'll probably get to about six feet tall this year. If I give them enough food, um, they're already sort of on track in that projection. So. Uh, I have no doubts that they're gonna become monstrous sized trees. And these cuttings here, if I were to root these now, by the end of the season, I'll probably end up just filling up this pot, this four by nine tree pot. And um, that's if I succeed. So, you know, it's up to you. You gotta figure this out. I know some people have been asking me and um, this is, I guess, a good demonstration, even though I don't like to do this. This is at least a good demonstration towards that. So. What I have here is actually the four by nine tree pots. We do the same rooting method that I do indoors. We do it like this out here in the summer. We have ourselves the pot. We have ourselves the soil that's very well draining, the just natural soil conditioner. It holds a decent amount of water. We can have some mulch on top. I highly recommend that, especially now in the summer. We can even give them a little bit of slow release fertilizer. I think that's probably a good idea at some point of the season. But we just have our cutting here that we prepare and it's very simple. We do a score at the bottom. And you can see that little mark there is how we took our pruning shears or our knife. We scored the bottom to expose the hardwood, the cambium. And the bottom, we make a fresh cut. That, that's giving us a larger surface area um, to potentially have some roots on. And then the top of the cutting is parafilmed. If you don't have parafilm, just completely forget this whole idea. You need some sort of anti-desiccant for this to work because desiccation is so easy for it to happen here. You really need to make sure that you got something like this. Um, you know, it's really cheap to use. It's cheap to find. It's easy to find. There's other names for it. There's other products that do a similar thing. So, you know, there you go. That's my advice. Now, what I'd also recommend now that we got this in here, I'm going to bring this particular bin. I have them in bins. We're going to bring them over to our rooting environment. And this is really important for the success, as I mentioned earlier in this video. So let me show you what my rooting environment looks like. Um, I ba basically, I have all of them that I've rooted indoors over the wintertime right here underneath this particular structure here that I've built. And this is basically the top of my cold frame that I took off the cold frame now that it's warmer, don't really need this. 
but I figured we use this as a multi-purpose and keep all the fig cuttings underneath here. First off, this is a little bit of a shadier location on the patio. It doesn't get full sun all day. That's quite important, guys. Also, this plastic here is making things a little bit warmer underneath, not a whole lot warmer. It's also maybe trapping in some of that moisture, a little bit of humidity, giving these guys a little bit more humidity on a very dry day. And then also it is um, keeping that water out. So I can accurately and very easily control 100% of the water that gets into the soil here. If we wanna succeed at rooting, like I said, you need to have the right environment and you need to have the right soil moisture. So if you have you know, an environment like mine in my climate where it rains a lot in the summer, it's gonna to be too much water. Your trees are gonna get, your soil's gonna get waterlogged, your trees are gonna rot, and it's just not something you wanna do. You're not gonna have enough air. You're gonna have anaerobic conditions. So that's a really big tip, is to have some sort of covering um, in a climate that's really wet and rainy. Now, if you have a really dry summer, you still wanna have some sort of covering, but maybe it's instead of plastic, you have yourself some shade cloth, um, maybe even insect netting, um, something to reduce the amount of sun, reduce the amount of heat, but let that water and that rain go through. And that's probably gonna get you the best results um, that you can get in an outdoor environment like this. Um, it's tough, it's not easy. Again, I don't recommend it, but if you're gonna do it, this is something you gotta do. You gotta have the right environment Otherwise, you're really not gonna succeed and you're gonna be kind of upset. So um, yeah, take my advice. I hope you guys got something out of this. If you did, please hit that subscribe button um, and check out our blog, figboss.com. We'll see everybody soon. Take care and I'll see you guys for tomorrow's video.